Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking Tax with Alex. This is a tax crime and criminals video number two. And I'm going to do something a little bit different on this video. So um, I'm going to start quickly, just talk about what, what changed and what I'm going to do different on the video. I'm going to go through the list of the, the crimes. So we'll just look at this quick summary. Then I'm going to talk about the bold, uh, uh, the brazen, uh, who I thought the most bold tax criminals are, the foolish, who I thought the stupidest tax criminals are, and some of my closing thoughts. What are, what are some key takeaways? So by quick introduction, I'm just, this is the second time I'm, I'm doing a video in this series and I'm going to contain it all into a singular episode. So um, last time I tried to do this uh, series, I ended up trying to read every single case and um, it turned into a three part uh, video series and the last one was like 30 minutes it kind of got away from me and I, I know no one wants to watch a 30 minute video about this so I I'm gonna do something a lot different and we're gonna kind of skim through the cases a little bit quicker I also have the cases over here on this screen just to help me out when I need to look at it and uh, if I need some other details so the, the, uh, the list of the cases that I looked at are here on this table so I just have a quick summary and the sentence. I thought it would be kind of neat to see what the sentences were. SR in the sentence table means supervised release. And so usually they do crime, they'll, 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 they do the crime, they do the time in jail. So 48 months, like the first one is 48 months, three years of supervised release afterwards. So SR, restitution, sometimes it's not determined. Sometimes it is by the time I read the cases, you know, and so I just put TBD if it's not in the case. So the first case in this list, list of five that I looked at was a manager of a Key West labor staffing company. And so basically this guy was not withholding payroll taxes. He wasn't reporting wages um, on those payroll to the IRS. So he wasn't withholding the taxes. He wasn't reporting it. And then finally he was employing or using a, as a staff, as a staffing company, he was employing to other companies, other service industries like hotels. Um, the, in work, uh, workers that weren't authorized to work in the U.S. So not only was he doing tax fraud, he was also doing immigration fraud. Mm, big, big no-no. Uh, second case here was a Florida woman sentenced to um, her role in the nationwide tax fraud scheme. So we did look at the ta that tax fraud scheme, tax fraud scheme last time in the last um, video series, and it's a it was a nationwide ski scheme. This woman just prepared some file fraudulent tax returns. So and her part was I guess. Minor, she wasn't the one going and doing all these conventions and, and recruiting people. She was just doing the returns. So she only got a year and a day, one year supervised release, two hundred thirty-two thousand of restitution. That's probably equivalent to her the amount of fraudulent refunds that she claims. Uh, we have Florida marketer. There's a lot of Florida people on this list. Uh, you know, just happenstance. I'm not picking on Florida. It's just how how it was. Um, there's a Florida marketer and syndicated conservation easement who got max three years and his supervised release and restitution are to be determined. A syndicated eas conservation easement is, uh, in so many words, a group of people that get together and buy a piece of land for like, let's say a million dollars and then they value it and they say, well, we could turn this land into high-end condos for, and that would be worth $5 million. But we're going to keep this area um, as a nature uh, destination. We're going to donate it to the federal government or whatever. We're going to donate it for that $5 million value and claim that as a charitable deduction. So that's kind of big picture what it is. And you can see why it's, um, why it's a problem. And by the way, they are legal. It's just a lot of people do them illegally. Um, the next we have is the owner of three Casa Don, Don Juan restaurants, pleads guilty tax evasion. And so in this case, basically he underreported his, his business income, a, uh, underreported the cash sales. And he's looking at max five years with supervised release and restitution to be determined. And then a former Statesboro City Council member um, sentenced to prison for the same thing. Um, for tax evasion and tax evasion running a bar, skimming cash and underreporting income. Looking, uh, He was sentenced to 33 months, three years supervised release and $352,000 of restitution. So the brazen, the most bold of this list that I thought was the owner of the three Casa Don Juan restaurants. Um, so 
why I thought it was bold is for four years, he prepared a separate set of false books to file his tax returns, like just complete separate sets. So he had his real books and his separate fake books, you know, it's like kind of like, you know, crime, crime drama stuff. Like that's, that's how I think about it. And he underreported cash sales in this time period by five to the tune of $5.1 million, which resulted in a IRS tax loss, tax you know, recoup loss of $1.6 million. So that's probably going to be re his restitution plus some. Like that's going to be the baseline of his restitution. And then he's going to pay penalties and, and whatever else on top of that. And the double whammy is that because he underreported his cash sales, he also underreported his Nevada sales tax because you know if you're if you're underreporting your sales, which you know translates to your net income at the end of the day, but you're you know he got caught for underreporting his sales tax for his state as well. That's you know that's no good. And then finally, he provided this false set of books to his tax preparer, who then prepared for, you know false tax returns that um, underreported the income. And why this is really brazen is during the audit, and we've seen this in the last series, a lot of the, in the last series, I should say, um, he doubled down. So he directed his bookkeeper to give them the, uh, give the IRS false records. Um, so false point of sales receipts, um, false financial records, you know, all of that stuff that supported what was reported on the tax return. So he really doubled down on that, that false set of books. You know, he had two sets of books. He made false statements to the revenue agent, the IRS revenue agent, and then he lied to the IRS criminal special agent. So um, very brazen, very bold, you know, secret set of books, and then he just doubled down on it. He eventually got caught and he's gonna pay the price. He's gonna go to jail. The most foolish, I thought, was the Florida marketer of the syndicated conservation easements. And um, you know, it doesn't quite strike you maybe just hearing me talk about it as foolish yet, but let's get into the details and maybe you'll agree with me. So from 2015 to 2019, he marketed these illegal tax shelters. And so, like I said, conservation easements are not by definition illegal. It is how people go about doing them that often make them illegal. And I'll go, go get into that in a second. The reason why this is very foolish though, is this guy was a licensed CPA and attorney with 30 years experience. So he probably thought he was above the law or he knew better and that he would never get caught. I bet it also helped him ease his conscience, conscious, uh, receiving that 12% commission, about $700,000. So what that means is every time he referred a client that participated in one of these shelters, he got a cut to the tune of $700,000. So he's, he's probably feeling pretty good about himself, you know, for four years or whatever, referring clients. And what really gets a lot of people and gets clients uh, kind of hooked into these things is because remember my example before when I briefly talked about it you get a group of people you buy a piece of land and then you're gonna instead of developing it you know maybe instead of mining it for minerals or oil or whatever you're you're gonna basically create a legal entity that's going to <clears throat> prohibit the development of that property and you're gonna um, give it to like the National Forest Service or whatever so it's always going to be a undeveloped natural piece of land and that appeals to a lot of people's emotions and they feel like they're doing good by you know doing green good for the earth if you will and they're getting tax write off for it the reason why this one was a problem is because it was giving off four to four and a half times multiples what does that mean well for every hundred thousand dollars that um, a, you know a, a client would put in or uh, put into this partnership this, this group they would get a tax deduction of about four hundred to four hundred fifty thousand dollars yeah so you can see on one hand you get kind of like you get tantalized into thinking you're doing a good thing for the earth and then you're getting a huge tax write-off on the other end and it's kind of a recipe for you know people that are really want to push the envelope furthermore this guy knew that these shelters didn't entitle him to a deduction and then finally, he purchased his own unit. So he even invested into these to the two, uh, to yield $100,000 deductions in each year for 2018 and 2019. So that's why I think he was the most foolish. My closing thoughts are cash-based businesses do have a reputation. Everyone knows cash-based businesses are very rife to underreport their sales, even the IRS, so don't think you're clever. Um, conservation land easements are hotly contested so for the reasons we just talked about in the the most foolish person um, 
the IRS is very privy to what's happening there. And if you get something, you're hearing like a four and a half, four to four and a half times multiple, that's unreal. Uh, I, in my practice, in my experience, uh, two to two and a half X multiples are more realistic. And um, the ones that I tend to think are, that have better legal standing are conservation building and historical um, renovation projects, not land easements, but I won't go into that here. And then knowing the difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. Tax avoidance is legal. It is what you do when you follow the tax code and take your legal tax deductions, everything that's allowable to you. Tax evasion is basically when you go outside the tax law, you don't report income, you overreport expenses, you, well, I mean, those are the two really big basic ones. And it's really important to know the difference. So that's it for this episode of Talking Tax with Alex. If you like this content, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and comment or email me your thoughts. I hope you like this shift in the way I'm doing it, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.